everybody. Hope you enjoyed that. And before you all go thinking, how come he's got five Gibsons? He must be loaded. I drive a little one litre Fiesta, Ford Fiesta on the drive. I keep it parked next to my BMW M5. <laughs> no, I, I have a one litre Fiesta and I don't think I'll be retiring with a, with a BMW. For obvious reasons. Right, I have a list, I have a list. Um, some of you wanted general specs, uh, a bit more lowdown on my new baby. A bit about the Yamano, the, the, the Yamano aspect and things like that. So, uh, we'll also hear it acoustically and then we'll hear it without effects because you've asked to see what it sounds like just um, naked. And we'll also do a quick comparison with my R9. So I'll play this in a minute. But first, let's go through some specs. Right, so here's some info. I've got a list. First one. Yes, it seems that some nitrocellulose does react to wall hangers. Can you see where the wall hanger would grab the neck? So symmetrically, both sides. Yeah, you can you can see that, I think. Can you? Anyway, the point is just there, a reaction to the wall hanger. It's, it's uh, I knew that when I bought it, so I'm just going to keep hanging it on my wall hanger because I don't care about stuff like that. Uh, next thing on my list. Yamano, oh yes, how do I know it's a Yamano? What is a Yamano? Um, so we know it's a Yamano. It was advertised to me in the sale as a Yamano aged guitar. I presume that means it was aged by Gibson before they exported it to Japan. So in the case, you get your normal little thing showing the, the checklist, that's normal, nothing to do with Yamano. But, and then you get the weed thing again, that we're all used to seeing. Then you get, this, which is obviously completely, I presume it's Japanese. So there's indication number one. Indication number two is a Gibson booklet, but on the bottom it says Yamano Music. And when you open up said Gibson leaflet, it's all in Japanese. Again, I presume it's Japanese. And nothing English there at all. All Japanese, Japanese, Japanese. And lastly, the serial number quoted on this little card, which is from Yamano Music Corporation and more stuff. And on the back, it's got my guitar's serial number. So I don't care whether it's actually Yamano or not. I believe it is Yamano. Why wouldn't I, why would I think anything to the contrary? What is Yamano? I didn't know. I have researched it. It now seems that Yamano Music Corporation was one of the distribution facilities in Japan, so they would get guitars in from across the world and they would then distribute them. As we know, Japanese have famously wonderful build quality and attention to detail. And I think they were very strict with Gibson and the level of quality they would accept. So the theory goes, if you buy a Yamano guitar, a guitar that was bound for the Yamano Music Corporation, that it's somehow better than the other guitars. I don't give a hoot. Um, I guess it makes kind of sense that if they were willing to send guitars back to Gibson, that the ones that Gibson sent to Yamano would be the best that they could do. But I don't really care. It's not something I, a debate I want to get really into. But that's what this is. It was aged and then sent to Yamano Music. Um, I think they got prettier tops and things like that. Like if it was a flame top, I think they got the nicer tops. But who cares? Next thing on my list, the neck. It's a, it's a big old beast of a neck. It's, I think what it is, is it's not like a D shape. Like the, the junior has a very obvious, whoa, what is this? But what this has is it doesn't get any, it's full all the way up round to here. So it is a chunky old beast of a neck. I love that. What's next? Oh well, yeah, it's a 57 reissue, which means there's no maple cap. This is all mahogany. Um, unlike uh, the other Les Pauls. Issues, none at all. I thought buying a 25, 26 year old guitar, I'd maybe have to worry about cutting the nut or doing something, tuning, why does it keep pick? None of that, it stays in tune brilliantly like all my Gibsons do actually. I've never had an issue with Gibson tuning. Uh, 
crackly pots. No, the pots work beautifully, no crackles at all. The taper on the pots is wonderful. In fact, I'll show you in a minute. You get everything, a hell of a lot happening between seven, eight, nine, and 10. I love that. I think that's audio taper, but they're really good pots. I have no intention of changing them. Uh, they work beautifully and you get the, the full lovely base right up to butt it, biting, cutting treble, really good. Um, the neck is beautifully playable. I don't see, I wouldn't know what to look for, but no bent neck, no issues with fretting out anywhere. So it seems to be mathematically set up really well. Um, I've not tampered with any truss rod and have no intention of tampering with the truss rod. The only thing that you have to sort of play around a little bit is exactly like the 335. You, f you can fall off the neck if you're too southbound with your vibrato and the thin E. So you just have to make sure you go from pitch and raise the pitch in a northerly direction. You don't go south or you will fall off the guitar. And the, you would on any guitar, but the 335 and this, you have to be a wee bit mindful of that. Whereas my, all my other Gibsons, I seem to have more room both north and south to impart my vibrato. But you play around that, it's no issue at all. Anything else on my list here? No, that is it. I don't know what the pickups are. I don't really care. I have no intention of taking them out and having a peek behind them. I don't know if they're standard or not. Uh, the pots, I haven't even taken the back plate off. It was on my radar when I bought a guitar, I would happily spend extra money on a wiring harness and get bumblebee paper and oil uh, capacitors and bare knuckle 550k pots. I have no intention of doing any of that with this. Uh, I'll demonstrate in a minute, it's wonderful. Right, that's the lowdown on this guitar. Right, next, acoustically, how does it sound? If I compare it to the R9. Now, it's a, a massive difference. If I sit, if I strum this quite close to the mic, I'll just strum a G chord. So this is my R9, my number one guitar. Drawing between the pickups. Hold that thought. That's way more alive and trebly bright than this. So that comes through when amplified, as you will hear, I'll do a wee, oh God, drop the plectrum. I'll do a wee comparison in a minute, amplified, straight away. So that's what we have uh, acoustically. Now, let me plug in and I'll play it kind of clean or as clean as I get without any pedals. So here it is, completely clean, no pedals at all, just a splash of reverb from the Cornell amp. <laughs> Same thing with the R9, tone full up. Definitely darker. Or maybe just warmer, maybe honkier. I don't know, I love it, I love it to bits. But that, the Black Beauty, is maybe closer to what you think of as a 59 Les Paul, even though it's a 57. I don't know, but I'm so privileged to have both. So, yeah, I'm so 
privilege to have both. Right, let's finish up with this. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you. Good night.